everyone for viewing Word of Life podcast and visit us at www.mexicowordoflifeministries.com and visit us on Facebook and Twitter. We would love to hear from you. And if you would like to donate our partner, our address is 624 East Hope Street, Mexico, Missouri. to uh, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to my youth pastor Timothy Hopkins can we give them all a hand clap for today I'll be uh, continuing on with um, my series uh, our final designation so let's continue on with the separation from God which caused death to enter into the world. When Adam and Eve were created, God lived in heaven, but he came down to earth and walked in the garden to talk to Adam. In the beginning, Adam and Eve were not separated from God. His life called Zoe in the Greek was part of them until their pride and rebellion against God separated them. When we were separated, from the life of God, things changed. This separated the spiritual realm from the natural realm. It also affected all life on earth. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, we are, um, because of the separation, uh, our human bodies do not live forever on this earth realm. Our bodies were meant to, but after uh, Adam and Eve brought death in uh, with the deception of the devil, now we have our um, first death, which is you know physical death, and yeah. sp spiritual death, which is being separated from God because of the original sin, but that's all right. Jesus and God had a contingency plan. Praise the Lord. Isn't that beautiful? Praise the Lord. And... Today, many people are about to die and leave this world. Death comes to us all, but we have to know God. Amen. So take heart to all who fear the Lord, because all those who love God will go to heaven, Amen. our final designation. So rejoice, because the Savior has come. Many people are getting ready to go, close their eyes, and leave. But if you know God, you will go to heaven. Amen. Unfortunately, if you don't know God, you will go to hell. Always know no amount of good deeds can buy your way to heaven. Amen. Being nice, and that's great, being nice, everybody. But you can't buy God, and you can't buy heaven. Amen. The only way to the Father is through Jesus. He Amen. said it in John. I can't remember where it was. <laughs> Should have wrote it down. But he said, the only way to get to my Father is by me. Amen. So get to know Jesus. Accept him. So when you close your eyes, you won't go to hell. Amen. So the question remains, why do people turn away from God? There is evidence all around us showing us that God created us and all the life around us. <coughs> can't deny it. Shoot. Look at space. We need Jason. He's always arguing with the documentaries. <laughs> <laughs> you can't deny that God does not exist. Amen. So why do people run away from him? Why do they do that? Well, one, God gave us the mind. He gives us uh, the opportunity to make choices. Amen. So it's your choice to Praise deny God. God. Not uh, God or the devil. The devil will influence you, but it's still your choice. Amen. You have to be the one to choose God. When you don't choose God, death will come. But, you know, moving on. Death had its beginning, and death will have its end. And to prove that, let's go check that out real quick. Let's see. I think it's in Revelations where it talks about that. Oh, where are you? Let me see. I'll find it in a minute. Ah, here we go. Yeah. I think I found it. 
Okay, it, this is found in Revelations, the second chapter, uh, starting at the 11th verse. It reads, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith from the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Amen. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. <coughs> death is like a curtain. You know when, you, uh, when the day comes to an end and the sun goes down. You close the curtain because night has come. That is what death is like. Death closes the curtain on life permanently. So, you know, that's why you have to get your act together. There will be no reprieve for lost souls after the final death. There will be no tearing down of the great wall that will separate life from death. Death is an attempt to destroy the creation brought forth by Almighty God. Satan, who is alive today, introduced death. The Bible says that the last enemy to be destroyed is death. That is when man will be restored to his original state and fellowship with God for eternity. When God breathed into Adam, the creature was designed to live forever in fellowship with God. Earth was in harmony with heaven. God walked with man. The Bible tells us of a time when God will restore man to his original state, to live in fellowship with him forever. For those who have accepted Jesus Christ as personal Savior, there will be no second death or eternity away from God. The curtain of death will be rent in two. Isn't that beautiful? Praise the Lord. Death, it's a cruel word that holds no warmth at all. With death, it doesn't matter who you are, it will claim you because it is the order of things. It is how life goes on. When one is born, another dies, going to their final designation. A few weeks ago, my family and I went to a funeral. We viewed the body of our loved one. We sat in the pews after we uh, viewed the body. And as I sat there, I saw death in a new light because the spirit was no longer in the body. It was an empty shell left behind. I saw that death was not the end of this life. It is a preparation to another life Amen. far from here. When our loved ones go to their final designation, we remain, <clears throat> excuse me, we remain here, laying their bodies to rest in the earth. We know they are not suffering anymore, but even so, our hearts ache because we miss them every day. Amen. But we can take comfort in the Word of God, for the Word of God is healing to the soul. Amen. The Holy Spirit is kind and gentle, touched many writers to write about death so we can better understand it and not fear it. Because remember in Timothy, can't remember which one, God said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, Amen. but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So don't fear death. Amen. Understand it. Get to know it. Read the Bible. The Lord will open your eyes. Amen. That's why he inspired many writers of the Bible to tell us about it. Death is the gateway to another place, a transition to a life far better than this one for those who know God. Amen. The Bible refers to death as falling asleep. I like that, isn't that nice? Amen. This reminds me of the story of Stephen. It's one of my favorite stories. He was a true warrior of God. He preached the gospel of Christ and was killed by stoning. But in one translation of the Bible, which I like, I don't know which one it is, but it reads, it's uh, found, in, I'm sorry, it's found in Acts. Uh, the seventh chapter, uh, starting at the sixth verse. It reads, Then he fell on his knees and cried out, 
Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he said this, he fell asleep. This can be uh, found, you know, again in Acts 7 and 60. For some people, death is peaceful, while others, it's terrifying. Amen. You can almost always tell where someone is going when their day of death comes. Mm -hmm. Some people on their deathbeds are screaming and hollering, not wanting to close their eyes, because they know they're going to hell. Amen. While others hear music and are at peace. When you hear stories like these, you see the importance of accepting Christ in your heart so you don't go to hell. As Paul wrote, the wages of sin is death, but eternal life through Jesus is a gift of God. This is found in Romans, the 6th chapter, 23rd verse. So the next question is, what is sin? Sin is disobedience to God by going your own way, doing what is wrong though it seems right, but it isn't. That's why the Bible says the wages of sin is death, because in the end, when death's door knocks and you haven't accepted Jesus as your Savior, you will die in your sins. So try to get your life together so that doesn't happen. There's a story, and it has a little comedy to it. This man, he was married to his wife, she went to church every Sunday, but he wanted to go fishing. His wife said, you want to come to church? He goes, no, I'm a fisherman. The pastor, he went to him, he said, you want to come to church? No, I'm a fisherman. Well, one day, something happened. He ended up in the hospital. And the doctors there were straight up with him. They said, you're going to die. So he called the preacher back. He said, you got to help me. I'm going to hell. I want to go to hell. <laughs> well, the preacher prayed for him. He accepted Jesus. And he said, man, I almost went to hell over a six-inch fish. <laughs> well, later in the week, he passed, but he got his life together. Amen. But the point is, don't wait until death comes. You might not make it. Amen. That's a close call. Amen. So, you know, don't go to hell with fish or a hamburger. <laughs> That's not cool. Amen. <laughs> but getting back uh, to the topic at hand. People think uh, that God doesn't love them and that he wants them to go to hell, but that's not true. Amen. God loves us. Remember, hell was created for Satan. It wasn't created for us. See, God loved us so much that he sent his precious son, Jesus Christ, to die for all of our sins. So we can be saved from eternal separation from God. Amen. And as a reason, Ezekiel, if you'll please turn there, um, it's Ezekiel uh, 33rd chapter, starting at the 11th verse. It reads, Say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way. The path that leads to receiving the wages of sin, and live, turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. For why ye die, O house of Israel? The choices people make in their lives decides where they go when they die. Amen. And you're probably wondering, what do I mean by this? If you choose sin, over righteousness, this path leads to hell because you refuse God. For some people, death follows them like a, a nagging bat. That's terrible. Amen. It's all because at some point in their lives, they open the door to the devil. Uh, a man named Vladimir Lenin, who was a communist and an atheist, was said to, um, on his deathbed, was screaming for days before the monster claimed him. No doubt it was the hellhounds. He was an atheist, he didn't believe in God. Amen. So he went to hell. That's very unfortunate. Death followed Hitler for years Amen. until he committed suicide right. in 1945. After reading the stories of these two men, you see they feared death 
because they knew where they were going. For those who don't know God, they fear death because impending doom awaits them. However, for, those, for all those who know God, there's no fear of death. But if there is fear, it can be for two reasons. One, Christians might not fully understand death. And the second could be that they're not living right. See, Jesus came so we can have life with him and give us peace of mind about life and death. That's why it's important to read the Bible so you can better understand things, Amen. which is very important. And if you'll please turn in Luke, uh, the first chapter, starting at the 78th verse through the 79th. It reads, Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from high have visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness, and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into peace. The way of peace is not to live in the shadow caused by the fear of death. Once a person belongs to Jesus, there is no more sting of death, Amen. which is caused by fear. Some have said that a person who has died to sin by receiving Jesus has died all the death he is ever going to undergo. Why is that? Because a born-again person does not experience the ending of life when he leaves earth. He experiences the real beginnings of life. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Shortly before his physical death, the Apostle Paul knew when the time came for him to make this transition. He said he was ready to go and looking forward to it. Though he died a painful death, he knew a better place awaiting him. Praise the Lord. And it's one of my favorite scriptures. It's uh, found in 2 Timothy, uh, the fourth chapter, uh, starting at the sixth verse through the eighth verse. And after this, I will close. As it reads, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Amen. And if you would like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, say, Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father I'm, a I'm a sinner. Forgive me of all my sins. I believe Jesus Christ died, Jesus Christ died and, rose and rose again. Come live in my heart, Holy Spirit. And remember that the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life.